Hello, I'm Darren again. Today's question asks if I would discuss conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please click like and please consider subscribing to my channel. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. So first of all, I would like to say that when we give something a name, when we give something a term, yes, it can be helpful because we can identify it, we can recognize it. But when we use a term like conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorists, we, we need to be honest, the sort of things that these bring up when we hear terms like that, we, we tend to dismiss whatever it is as insane. We tend to think it's crackpot. It's only believed by gullible people or people wearing tinfoil hats. When in reality, uh, some conspiracy theories are actually quite grounded in reality and they could well be plausible. Some even turn out to be true. Uh, the one that comes to mind would be the Watergate scandal in America in the early 1970s. Also, there are some people who believe in conspiracies who may have other things going on. There may be delusional thinking there as a part of a mental health condition. Though usually, though not all the time, but usually those kind of conspiracies would be more uh, based on a personal level. For example, their boss and work is out to get them. Uh, their partner is cheating. Friends are plotting against them, gossiping about them. You know, something doesn't work out for them and it's because envious people sabotaged it somehow. Other times, the thinking may be delusional, but not in a pathological sense. Uh, it's more the conspiracy fits their belief. The conspiracy fits their agenda. Uh, the example would be um, the 2020 election in America. Now Donald Trump claimed he had won the election. He had already won, but he ended up losing. So there was fraud. The election was stolen from him. He, he made all these claims without any kind of uh, evidence, but creating a conspiracy theory that fitted his belief. But for today, I'm going to discuss some of the conspiracy theories, the ones that sound fantastical, but I'm not going to openly dismiss them. Well, maybe just a little. Um, I'm more going to talk about the thinking and the belief system behind why we buy into so many conspiracy theories. And let's be honest, we all do on some level. We all believe some conspiracy theory on some level. And if you stick to the end, there's a very famous conspiracy theory. I'm going to debunk it with just one question. So stick to the end. Now, there are so many conspiracy theories. Um, for example, the Illuminati. Now, this is the belief, this is the theory, the world is run by a few very select, very ancient, very powerful families. And over generations, hundreds, if not thousands of years, these families have worked together to manipulate and control the planet Earth and, and its, its population. Now, if I were to apply that to my family, we can't even agree how we're going to spend Christmas. So how these families can work together to the same agenda for all of these years, for all of these generations, is beyond me. Other theories include the moon landing was faked, uh, Area 51, um, the flat earth. Now when it comes to the flat earth, that is one that really does confuse me because we have seen pictures of our planet from orbit. We have we can look through telescopes, we can see other planets around, and yet the one we're on is flat. So again, I'm not really sure how that works. Aliens are real. They're alive and well. They walk among us. There's these lizard people who are trying to take over the world. There's coronavirus, the 9-11 terrorist attack, global warming. To be honest, you know what? I could go on all day. There's conspiracy theories in and around pretty much everything, so I'm just going to skip that. But what I will say is there are some who believe that some conspiracy theories are put out there. They're, they're peddled by these shadowy, sinister types in order to distract from the real conspiracy. So if you think about it, there are actually conspiracy theories around conspiracy theories. And what I've noticed is there seems to be this recurring theme in these conspiracy theories. Now, they never seem to be about anything benign or boring or mundane or it's never about the good of everybody, these conspiracy theories. They all seem to be involving very powerful families, companies, uh, governments, aliens and so on. And they all seem to have ulterior motives, sinister agendas that they don't want you or me to know about. And like I said, we all believe in conspiracy theories on some level. There's some that we accept, even if we don't fully believe them, we accept they could well be true. But I think that what cultivates a lot of the conspiracy theories is fear. It's mistrust, it's uncertainty. Now, 
Those who believe in conspiracy theories, they tend to assume that whatever it is is going on, you know, nothing is coincidental, nothing is accidental, it's always sinister. The outcome is always going to be something dangerous, something painful. And that distrust could well be because of maybe bad experiences they've had, either, either personally, historically, or do you know what? It could even come down to an overactive imagination. If, you know, let's be honest, today's movies, you know, we, we see a lot of governments, big corporations, you know, intimidating witnesses, locking people away, you know, men in black suits turning up and wiping people's memories. So like I said, there's quite often an element of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and the anxiety is often increased during stressful times. Things like war, acts of terrorism, and I don't think it's a coincidence uh, there's been an increase in conspiracy theories over the past year. Now, given the past year we've been in, there's been a global pandemic, lockdown, social distancing, coronavirus. You see, our brains don't like things that don't make sense. Questions need to be answered. We need to see rhyme and reason, cause and effect. And where there is mistrust, you know, any version, any, any especially an official version, it's often questioned. Um, any version that's given out there, it's often a lie. Where there are blanks in the information, we tend to fill those blanks in ourselves based on our beliefs. The thing with uh, quite a few conspiracy theorists is, though, they don't just question. They openly dismiss any official version. Again, nothing happens by accident. Nothing is through error. Uh, nothing is done for the greater good. There's always some convoluted plot. You know, the mistrust in those powers is so strong. Corporations are greedy. They don't care who they kill, who they hurt, as long as they make money. Scientists are lying because they're in the pockets of these, uh, these organizations that are paying to them. Um, governments are lying. Governments have sinister agendas against their own population. And I've noticed uh, a lot of debates with conspiracy theorists. Um, there seems to be a lack of critical thinking. Now, what I mean by that is critical thinking, it's being open to being influenced by new information, um, being prepared to be wrong every bit as much as you're prepared to be right. And I've also noticed with a lot of conspiracy theorists how they try very hard to convince other people to recruit them into their way of seeing things. Now, that lack of critical thinking, that could be for a lot of reasons. It could be some people are just perhaps disagreeable. There could be low self-esteem. They may have well gone through a very difficult experience. Uh, maybe they're even just dissatisfied with their own lives. It could be because they feel very passionately about whatever it is they believe in. We can, the thing is that we can believe in something very sincerely and still be every bit as much sincerely wrong as we are sincerely right. But what I've noticed we tend to get is what you would call confirmation bias when it comes to arguing. Um, now, what that means is any argument or opinion that reinforces the theory is accepted as evidence. You know, it could be a YouTube video, it could be a post on Facebook, um, an expert opinion from someone who claims to be an expert. And I think that's because it's in our nature to look for information that supports and reinforces what we already believe and to be drawn to things that we already have a belief or an interest in. The thing is though, any actual evidence or argument that the conspiracy is wrong, it's fake or whatever, then that is untrue. It is mistaken. It's actually seen or used as evidence for the actual theory. You know, that's what they want you to believe. So arguing can sometimes be something of a losing battle. If you don't believe in the conspiracy, it's because you don't have the information. If you do have the information, but still don't believe it, then you're stupid. You are brainwashed to believe the lie. You are, as I was called once, you're one of the sheeple people. Now that mindset seems to stamp out any kind of challenge or argument. Any argument for is added as evidence. Any argument against is dismissed, which means there can be no adjustment, again, no critical thinking. And a lot of conspiracy theorists hold fast to their beliefs. Those beliefs, if you will, those theories are not falsifiable. Now, what I mean by falsifiable, it's a scientific term. What that means is when we believe something, scientifically, we ask the question, can we prove this to be wrong? Now, I would give an example. Now, I have a little black dog. so. I may have a theory that all dogs are small and black. 
But I might see another dog that's brown, that's grey, that's spotted, that's whatever. Um, so my theory has been challenged. It has been falsified. I can now accept that not all dogs are small and black. With conspiracy theorists, what we often get is those other dogs, you know, the brown dog, the grey dog, whatever it is, that's not really a dog, that's a plant. You know, it's, it's, it's a cat dressed up trying to fool you into thinking it's a dog. A lot of conspiracy theorists also, they tend to see links, they tend to find meaning where there isn't any. Now, maybe, sometimes maybe there are, but other times maybe it's just because the truth is just too mundane. It sounds better, it's more interesting, it adds to the evidence whenever it's fantastical, whenever it's convoluted. Now the thing about conspiracy theories as well, is these secrets, they require a lot of people to keep the same secrets. Now, some of these uh, conspiracy theories, they may well be exposed by whistleblowers um, because there may genuinely be something going on that, that needs to be highlighted. But even if not whistleblowers, now after a while, how long do you think it is? Someone who, say, faked the moon landing or someone who was involved in, in whatever, you know, how long would it be before after a few drinks in the bar one night to start telling people what really happened? In order for that conspiracy theory to work, is everybody involved has to be telling the same story, has to keep quiet. Now, as I said earlier on, my family can't even agree how we're going to spend Christmas. Now, I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to debunk a very famous conspiracy theory with just one question. The conspiracy theory, uh, it involves in 1947, it was reported in the newspaper that a flying saucer had crash landed in Roswell, New Mexico. The following day it was reported that it wasn't a flying saucer, it was a weather balloon. Now over the years there's been a lot of theories come up around this, you know, what are the government hiding? Um, we've got Area 51, this, this secret base in America where the government, these shadowy government types are experimenting with alien technology. They have aliens there, they're learning from them and so on. So here's the question, it's going to debunk that. If any of that were true, even just the smallest little bit, do you really think Donald Trump would be able to keep that quiet? You decide for yourself. In the meantime, thanks for watching.